I would never let a nigga get with you. Ay, listen, who got an issue? In other words, ain't no trust issues. Yeah, cause baby, I'm. Oh. Pregnant and you don't do shit, but nag and get on my nerves. And then when the nigga nut up, you want to say, "Oh, I'm pregnant." No, nah, don't use the excuse, shouty. I be you want to sit there and play the business. Big, you get on nigga nerve, and then when he beat your ass, cry wolf. And then when I start nutting up on you, you want to record shit. I don't care. You see, I'm still talking. Cause get what? When I nut up, I promise you, I'm gonna roll your ass. Ain't nobody telling on me. I already told you, I ain't I never cuff up for now another cracker. Yeah, we're gonna Bro. bang out with these 17 bullets. So you're threatening to kill yeah, me? Yeah, all that. I ain't stutter. You heard what I said. When I say I got a story to tell today, I mean that. Oh, let me catch my breath, y'all. First of all, I am pregnant. If you didn't know, now you know. 23 weeks on today. By the time I drop this, I'm probably, well, of course, I'm be freaking on the. <laughs> but it depends on what timeline you're on. I might be a mom by the time you watch this. Like, I may have already had my baby. If you guys are watching, like, later. <laughs> What's up, Re Mafia? It's your girl, Chen Marie, and I'm back from the video. Today, this video is gonna be something that's going I don't know this is like the most vulnerable time in my life like being pregnant but when I tell you the story I'm gonna tell and testify and tell my testimony to that point in my life vulnerable oh y'all it is so deep I just I'm gonna save it for after the intro I may have already started with like a trigger warning I don't know if not trigger warning it's gonna get very explicit it's gonna be very detailed it's gonna be very traumatic so to those of you who could relate on the topic or who have PTSD or whatever the case is sensitive you know ears or your epath just empath I'm sorry but just brace yourself or exit the video okay so no negative energy being sent to me all of this block right now okay um i'm telling my story because god just gave me my final confirmation today he done ring the bell and said okay it's go time sweetie it, it yeah i don't care don't do it okay so <clears throat> i'm here to tell my story y'all my story of it started when I was 18 years old and it like basically it worked its way up until I was 22. I'm 23, just turned 23 and it's been a year since I've been out of an abusive, toxic, traumatic, terrible relationship, okay? And the reason why I ain't tell this story any sooner is because of course I had to heal and process everything and I'm still like healing. I've already processed the whole four years of abuse and toxicity and all that. And it took a lot of processing because y'all, I'm not even gonna be able to tell you guys every detail in this one video alone. So comment down below if you guys want another part and if you guys wanna hear like other points of it because it was stages of this abuse it was stages of how i got reeled in groomed manipulated abused like it was of course they don't ever start off by just poof, 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 whoop your ass okay it don't ever start off like that it, it started off all 
romantic and oh my gosh i love him uh love bombing all that honeymoon stage and then little by little red flag red flags red flags red flag then boom here's who the truth of the person is then came out okay but i'm gonna have a daughter you guys i'm gonna have a baby girl and oh my god I can't even talk too much on it because now that uh, that is what brings tears to my eyes. Like I'm so blessed to be having a baby, you guys. Like I had a miscarriage in this toxic, abusive relationship years ago in like 2020, and Lord knew, and my spirit baby knew that was not the situation to be bringing kids into. And I'm so grateful that God has the divine timing, and everything happened according to the most highest plan okay so i'm grateful for all the experiences i've been through because i learned so much and i know that god got me through it not put me through it got me through it so that i could tell my story and help other young girls middle-aged women young ladies older women because i know women who go through this their whole life and end up dying in this situation and lord knows it's been several times i can't even count on my head where i was this close to being flatlined dead off finito okay and i say that and that's the god honest truth i've been shot at i've been choked almost till i could, didn't have no more breath in my body i've been beat I've been abandoned. I've been, you know, put in so many compromising situations. And I just, when I say I've lived a life, y'all, not necessarily the perfect life, the life that one would want to live, but I've lived a life. And I'm so grateful for the changes. I'm so grateful for the change. And I thank God. I thank my angel ancestor spirit guides. I thank my living prayer warriors and the unliving prayer warriors who prayed for me before I even got to that point. And my mom, look, the reason why I even want to tell this story right now is because my mom was just telling me um, how a lady was talking to her about her daughter and she basically in an abusive, toxic relationship. And she see that the boyfriend is jealous and, you know, it just keep her up at night as a mother and now that i'm gonna be a mom like <sighs> that joint just you know i was so close to being dead and it just it really is a humbling experience for real and people really don't know what be going on behind closed doors anybody can make it seem like you know a good relationship anybody can make it seem like oh happy go live like you know lovey dovey perfect relationship anybody could portray that image but you never know what goes on behind closed doors and usually you god has sent good friends in my life who i even fell out with friends behind the man i was with because they just couldn't see their friend being put through all that because it it really messed with people's hearts and it was to the point where I couldn't even talk to my family my family couldn't even deal with me because it just you know it hurt their feelings to see their loved one their daughter their sister their niece you know their cousin putting up with that type of stuff and like now that I'm at the stage where I was able to um process all of that and I just, I'm grateful that people really cared for me. Like, even the people who was my friend at one point in time. And they said those words to me. And even my family, like, <laughs> y'all, I'm so grateful to everybody in my life who wasn't even my friend. Like, you was just a, you know, a bystander, and you could just see that hurt on me. You could just see by the way I would walk around, where it would be people who could just sense that I was being abused, that people could just sense that energy inside of me. And I most definitely know God sent those people to say the right things. Like, granted, 
if you know somebody who's in an abusive relationship or if you know somebody who is in a toxic relationship or going through you know a very unstable relationship like I would say just keep praying for them and you know people is going to stay in a situation until they're ready to leave and the only explanation that I could give personally from someone who been through it and stayed with that for years and would even fall out with anybody behind that man who would beat me up and say mean things to me and would still try to chase him wherever he go will let him break my stuff, break my body, them, you know, gave me black eyes, messed up my leg, you know what I'm saying? You know, and he's really the reason I had a miscarriage in the first place, too. Because he was still, you know, putting his hands on me even after I got pregnant with his baby, you know? And I just want to let you guys know it don't stop. <laughs> it don't. They going to say whatever they want and they need to say to you know i'm so sorry they're gonna try to guilt trip you they're gonna try to pull on your heartstrings and make you feel guilty like oh I've, after everything i've done you know what i'm saying like it's so many words it's so many mind games it's and the only explanation that's why i'm pregnant y'all please just be patient but it is like a drug an abusive toxic relationship it is like a drug like i could not like i can't even judge crackheads <laughs> i don't because that type of love even though you know it's not good for you you still just your head it's like a mental thing like it's like you see that oh he said he was gonna stop hitting me and here he go hit me he said he loved me, but here he goes saying he hate me and I'm ugly and I'm a hoe and I'm a slut. And, you know, he calling out my name, making me feel bad and saying every bad thing in the book. Bringing up every dark secret that only he knows and, you know, the things that only he knows. And he throwing it in my face, making me feel bad. He's taking and destroying my property, abusing me, taking advantage of me, manipulating me. No good and well, this is what's happening. But in my head, it was like, I'm going to stick beside him. He's going to change. That's my man. <laughs> That's really like, you know what I'm saying? And it, and it was times, many times where I was fed up and I was just like, I'm going to find leave, I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave, I want to leave so bad. Now, sometimes where I really, really, really want to leave, I ain't have a way to leave. <laughs> or I done told my people, my people done came trying to pick me up and play Captain Save Charity. And I would still go back. And it's like witchcraft. It's like a soul tie. It is a soul tie. But... I feel like a lot of these men, they be having a lot of these men who are abusive and narcissistic and toxic and play these games and, you know, is that person, I feel like it'd be mental illness, it'd be mommy daddy issues, it'd be witchcraft, they're warlocks and they put like spells on these, on the vulnerable, on the weak, it'd be like. Because that pool, it's like a certain, it's a different level of a pool, an energetic pool that is not explainable. Like, if you've ever been in love, which I honestly, I can't say I was in love with him. Like, looking back in hindsight, like, I had so much love for him, but it wasn't a good love. It wasn't like the type of love that God wanted me to have in somebody who was meant to be my husband. You know what I'm saying? And, um, yeah, and granted, at the time, <laughs> I seen it all with him. The kids, the wedding, 
the ring, the marriage, everything. But I'm so glad it didn't get to that point. Like, and even anybody who know me will tell you the only reason why I even left that relationship after four years of being in that toxic BS is because God himself took me and misplaced me out of that situation and then after i got removed from that because i'm gonna keep it real we got evicted from the house that we had together we got evicted because it was only me paying the bills <laughs> let's just be frank that's another thing a lot of these men they don't be providers they don't be <laughs> they will literally depend on that same woman that same girl who they are abusing, who they are hurting. It gets so deep, but I got evicted from the place that we were living at. So that forced me to have to come back to my parents' house because we done live with his grandma. We done stayed with his little friends before. We done slept in cars together, slept in hotels and motels together. We done I done, when I say rode for that man, through the ugly, through the roaches, through the bed bugs, through the couch hopping and the drugs and the alcoholism and the abuse. Stuff that I was raised in the suburbs. Think about the Bel Air. <laughs> Think about the... <sighs> I was raised in a good house, two-parent household. My parents got good paying jobs. We had everything. Food, house, clothing, bills was always paid. They had a loving, non-toxic relationship. I have siblings. I have a big family. But I still ended up in that situation. And I could just say they know how the, the, the predators, they know how to pick their victim. They know who to prey on. They know how to manipulate they choose the right people <laughs> and at the time just got out of high school had mental illnesses wasn't treated for it felt like oh i'm grown now you know what i'm saying had that type of mindset and i had broke up with my high school boyfriend because i wanted to go out and see what the world had for me and okay brick wall years of trauma years of going through trials and tribulations okay so i'm just here to share the realness of it so this is like a long long intro and i'm trying to figure out where i should start okay so i'll be right back had to pray on it y'all <laughs> and yeah i'm just start from the beginning how did i end up in a toxic relationship how did it happen how did it start what's the signs you know what i'm saying um so met him on a dating app pof okay we end up linking up and ever since after that it was just like locked in you know what i'm saying the relationship was rushed it was it happened very fast we were boyfriend and girlfriend exclusively dating after like two weeks of us knowing each other so very rushed very like he just what he was like he was like i just i know that you're the one for me and i want to go ahead and make it official cut off all my whole you cut off all your work and we just focus on each other and ready to take it you know to the next level pretty much so yeah when i got with him just graduated was in college had a job working at old navy had my own car lived with my parents green green when i say green if you don't know what green is, that means that you basically are innocent to the streets you have no street knowledge you have very little just knowledge you're very green innocent clean slate only been with like one guy or two you know what i'm saying and the one i was with he was my high school boyfriend and yeah so 
like I was telling you guys, I did have mental illness. And um, I say did because I've basically, I'm not that anymore. I had a spiritual awakening and I ended up realizing it was just spiritual attacks. But that's a whole nother story, okay? And that's like probably above a lot of y'all. You know, a lot of people can't understand that type of stuff. And that'll be a whole nother video, okay? But, um, yeah, so was having a lot of conflict with my parents. I was the rebellious child, you know what I'm saying? I was the child who was a difficult one and had a lot of issues because of my emotional issues and just mental issues and stuff like that. So met he, I don't know, we first started leaning up. It was like a lot of smoking weed, wasn't smoking. Like I probably tried weed maybe two, three times. Got with him two, three times a day if that like and he would put me on the liquor and he was bringing me around things i'd never been around like street stuff he was a gang member he was in a gang he was in the streets heavy and um he had pending charges and yeah so that was what i knew about him and you know at the time i'm like the type of person that was like, oh, I can fix him. You know what I mean? I had that type of mindset, like, I can help him, I can heal him, we can grow together, type thing. Child, bye, okay? <laughs> you live and you learn, okay? I'm saying? But, um, yeah, so I just felt kind of like it was like a project in a way. Like, I don't know how to explain it. I was just like, you know what? We can work past it. Like, you know, you see the movies where you know what I'm saying, that romanticize that street thug love, you know what I'm saying, and social media and stuff like that, and I ain't never been around that, so it was just all new to me, and he really liked that, like, the fact that I didn't know, I didn't have a lot of experience in life, I didn't have a lot of street experience, experience in relationships, you know what I'm saying, like, it was like, the boyfriend I had, it was a high school relationship, so, <sighs> It was very still innocent at the same time. Like, yeah, we was bumping and grinding, but it wasn't like, you know what I'm saying? Nothing extreme. But when I got in this relationship, it was extreme. He showered me, he love bombed me, giving me all this stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like, making it seem like he got, you know, his shit together pretty much. Like, oh, I make money, you know what I'm saying? I'm a hustler. I got a job, you know what I'm saying? But I'm really a hustler. I know all these people. I got street creds. I'm that man. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody gonna mess with my shoddy. All that type of stuff. And he just really over masculine, masculine lies. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. He overdid it. <laughs> like, if he took me around his friends, he gotta be the alpha in the room. He gotta be the loudest one. He gotta you know, be showing off like, ooh, this is my girl, like, pretty much doing the most, but you know what I'm saying? At the same time, I'm just like, I don't know how men act. I haven't really been around a lot of men. I grew up with all sisters and my dad in the house and my mom in the house. So I wasn't really around a lot of men, boys, like none of that. And yeah, so I'm just like, maybe this is normal. like. This is like scary. Like, I remember he took me to the hood. He would be taking me to make his plays and everything. And I would be so scared, y'all. Like, I just knew it was going to be like a shootout. Like, this man keep, kept the gun on him. Kept stuff on him. You know what I'm saying? And he was doing all that. So, I was scared. I'm from the suburbs. I ain't never seen nothing like this before. And I'm just like scared like i remember i used to have my hand on the uh the thing that made the seat go back i'll be ready to duck he'll be going inside leave me in the car in these very shady places and i'll be pretty much trying to duck like i'm scared i'm like oh fuck this might be the day i die you know what i'm saying it was just <laughs> it was so crazy but yeah so ended up getting kicked out he ended up coming to pick me up whatever so that whole experience, like, I got kicked out because uh, I violated my parents, like, rules. I was staying out, you know, getting high, you know, 
not obeying their rules. So they end up kicking me out, trying to show me a lesson. But I guess they expect me to like come back and you know what I'm saying, get in line. But it took years for me to get in line, y'all. Like after that, I was so like, he came pick me up. My my parents had threw my stuff out. He came pick me up with his friend, and he just played like the Prince Charming, like, oh, I saved you, now you owe me. And he used that and dangled that over my head throughout the whole relationship, I kid you not. Like, oh, I came to save you, your parents don't love you. They don't, you know what I'm saying? Just saying all these bad things, making me believe that my parents didn't love me, making me believe that my parents, like, I couldn't go back to them and all that good stuff the whole time. You know, that wasn't the case. And it took me, you know, looking back in hindsight, I could have been came back and avoided a lot of stuff, but I chose to stay in that situation and go through all that abuse and toxicity because it also, it was a drug. Like you put me on drugs, you put me on alcohol and it really made my mental worse. And especially when I'm vulnerable on top of that, I have no experience, all that good stuff. It was just all in all, he, took full advantage of me and I did a lot of things that I'm not proud of <sighs> because like he put me in situations and that's a whole nother story y'all that I'm not ready to tell yet but whenever God you know give me the green light I would you know what I'm saying I'll be glad to well yeah that's not if God tell me to do, I'll be glad to share that story. But we ended up being homeless together. End up, after he came pick me up, played Captain Save a ho. <laughs> Stayed in motels. It was so disgusting, y'all. I'm used to cleanliness. I'm used to not having roaches and, you know, bed bugs and stuff like that. Like, the first place, the first, the first extended stay place we stayed in, it was nice. Ish. It wasn't like, you know, the Hilton, but it was straight. It was like, okay, I can do this. But then we ended up running out of money. I ended up losing my job. He ended up losing his job. So we just depend on him to be trapping. That didn't work out. <laughs> and then um, he, after all that, he became abusive, like. He became abusive after um, we, you know, basically lost everything and stuff really got hard and he would be showing me red flags like you'd be very aggressive with me and you'd be, you know, saying mean things to me, hurt my feelings, but then I'll turn around and be like, oh, I'm sorry, I love you, you know, blah, 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 I didn't mean that. But then you go turn right back around and do the same thing and then I... I can't remember the first time he put his hands on me, but he did. And that like really broke my heart. And afterwards he basically love bombed me and made it seem like he wasn't gonna do it again. But of course it happened hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times more. And you tried to kill me before too. So yeah, I just wanna, just with that statement alone or that little, you know, alone, just know if they put your, put their hands on you one time they'll do it again especially if you forgive them forgive them they'll do it again trust me and I remember at some point I ended up telling like my mom or sisters like I ended up telling my people and they were just like oh. like you know of course that broke their heart and they just like uh uh you need to go home like you need to come home I was down the next and it just it got worse and worse and worse y'all like the hotel I can't say hotel the motels we were staying at disgusting like, I remember one I remember several but one of them had a lot of myth heads and crackheads and it was so shady y'all I remember another one looked like a crime scene happened there a murder happened there and it was bugs it was nasty people was outside you know trapping and having all type of stuff going on and we ended up being so broke that I had 
bad stuff happened to me. A lot of bad stuff happened to me. It was so bad to the point where if the abuse didn't break me down to my core, what happened after we would just slap broke and homeless, that broke me down to every ounce of dignity I had, every bit of love I had for myself. It even feels a little bit. It took everything from me. And it messed me up so bad, like, so bad. Very traumatizing, very shameful, very disgusting. And for a man who is supposed to be my provider, my protector, to allow stuff like that to have happened to me, it says a lot about somebody's character, okay? And it says a lot about what type of man you are to be dependent on a 18 year old girl who <laughs> is easily manipulated, vulnerable, have lost her family, beef with her family, is going through a culture shock on top of that and going through homelessness and not being able to keep up with herself. Like, I need hygiene. I'm still a woman. What couldn't even keep up myself how I would, you know what I'm saying? And being introduced to all these drugs and alcohol. I done, he done gave me pills. He done gave me a lot of stuff, okay? I haven't shot nothing up, but who's not to say that the same drill that you would shoot up wasn't in them damn pills, which it was. <laughs> it was, okay? He be popping these. Perks, Zans, Beans, X pills, all that, done it. The alcohol, done it. Of course, weed, weed was my escape. The drugs and the alcohol end up being like my escape from how much bull I went through. And that made things so much worse, y'all. Cause I have a mental illness on top of that. So it really like, it really like at that point in time I was not who I am I was not me at that point in time my soul was gone my values was gone who I am as a person the morals I have was gone and yeah that's really all I'm gonna say because a lot of people who knew me at the time, I remember people used to say that I'm crazy and, you know, oh, Charity, oh, you don't want to mess with her, she. Like, people used to make so many jokes and made a fool of me because I made a fool of myself off them drugs I ain't never had before, them, the environment I ain't never been around before, and I just became a different person. I started talking different, started walking different, started acting different, started doing stuff I ain't never did before. But I was 18, just graduated a few months ago. And I was around people who was pushing in their 30s. You know what I'm saying? Like they in their late 20s, mid. He was in his like early mid 20s. I was 18. The people he would be bringing me around was in their late 20s or 30s. Some of them was in their 40s, 50s. <laughs> Old. And everybody who came around me that he introduced me to they'll be like she's green like damn people used to just call me like white girl they used to call me like an oreo and people could tell like i didn't belong here they like where's your parents like i could tell you you don't belong here like it's some people who you could tell they belong here but you you don't belong here where's your parents at do they know where you at are you okay why are you putting up with this like y'all because here's also what would happen he would abuse me and hurt me so much but then he'll be the he'll be the supply for the release i needed like he was like my pharmacy in a way like say um i'm a headache i'm a migraine and he's the tylenol I'm the 
crackhead and he's the the crackhead plug <laughs> like I don't know if that's a good analogy but as traumatic and hard as that time was for me he would be the one who would roll up the weed he would give me a liquor he would be taking all my money and basically managing it my mom used to say he must be your pimp That's how, you feel me? That's what type of dynamic it was. It was a pimp hole dynamic. Like, damn, this nigga, you, you, you look at him every time anybody asks you anything, like, train, groom. And he did take me around people who would help groom me because I remember this one motel we were staying at, um, his friend had a girl, and basically they would link us up to like be friends and she would basically teach me a lot of you know the stuff that I would need to know to survive or whatever in that type of environment and yeah it was just a lot I remember he had drugged me like literally drugged me but actually I don't know nothing about me I'm the one that they be going to cause I control shit I don't know what they be know me I don't need no sustenance nigga they be knowing too much and they annoying I don't wanna focus on that shit like where we going cause I been on the highway swerving trying to get to you and you know that shit that be working all these bitches talking about their problems like a concerning I just feel like $60,000 on the burger